Hey guys, welcome back. I uh, hope you're all well. So, uh, what you just saw there was a little demonstration of the lick we're going to look at today, which is a series of arpeggios uh, of two minor seventh arpeggios and a major seventh arpeggio. Uh, very much in the style of Michael Romeo. If you, any of you are f f familiar with Symphony X, uh, for instance, check the solo he does on, Sim on uh, Sea of Lies, where he does creep in with a couple of those kind of arpeggiated tapping plays. So, and also some lesser known players like Phil Hilborn, who's, um, who played for a number of, for many years actually on the We Will Rock You show in London. Um, and uh, so it's, it's a really good little lick to practice your tapping, uh, left and both left and right hand tapping. So what I wanted to do is actually take you through the, to the lick, under, to explain to you a little bit what we're looking at harmonically and also how to practice this lick and what I'm actually specifically doing on this one. So, we begin this lick with a D minor 7th arpeggio and what we're doing is that we're tapping out of nowhere onto the 5th fret of A. From here, we're tapping onto the 8th fret of A. So what we've played so far is the root note and the, and the, the, the minor 3rd. And then with my 2nd finger, now sometimes I, if it's a long sequence of tapping, I'll actually put my pick in between here, my, inside my middle finger and tap with my index because I feel more comfortable with that. But in this case, because I have a couple of bends at the end, I tapped with my middle finger. So I went root, minor third, and then I hit the fifth. Then I, I did a, another tap with my left hand out of nowhere on the fifth fret of G. Then I went to the seventh fret of G, and then I tapped this time on the tenth of G. So what I'm getting here is a flat seven, the root, and back to the, uh, back to the, uh, to the minor third again. Then I went up to the fifth of E, and I ended up here with my fifth, with the, playing the fifth, the flat seventh with my pinky, and then back onto the 10th fret, which is the root note. Then this is where it gets a little bit tricky. I, this is the first time where I'm actually pulling off the tab. So I'm back onto that note, pulling back off here as well. Then here, I'm tapping, and then I'm getting my finger in place before taking the tap off to play the seventh fret of G, and then pulling back off here onto the fifth fret of G. Then I'm doing the same thing on the A, and then pulling back off. Oops, there you go. Okay, now it's really important when you're coming back on the pull-offs to basically wait that your, both your hand is in place before you, you pull off your hand. Okay, one time. Okay, otherwise you're not gonna get the right note, it's gonna sound a bit messy. Also, let's talk about uh, the cleanliness. It's very important when you're practicing tapping licks, especially with both left and right hand, to really work. I call this due diligence. As a guitarist, your due diligence is to make sure you sound clean. Okay? Now, one way, normally I tend my students not to practice with distortion on, but it's an exception when I'm talking about more th things like sweep picking, um, uh, tapping, uh, legato generally, because you want a bit of distortion so you can work on the cleanliness of your playing. So that would mean, for instance, your right hand, if you're right-handed obviously, it should be sitting on top of the string so you're actually blocking the unwanted strings as well. You're not letting everything sort of go crazy underneath. It's also making sure when you're hammering, hammer hard so that you're blocking the notes. I really often very compared to ham hammering on is not meaning coming from too far. It's being able to get a lot of energy in a short in a short space of in a short space. I compare this a lot to um, to uh, martial artists that have, you know when you see those films in martial artists you have to break a ton of bricks with just one little short hit like this or ice if you're into a karate kid. Well, it's not to do with how far you're coming from. It's the intent in which you're coming in. Same with legato playing. It's not how hard you hit the strings, but it's the intent you're putting on to make sure that when you hit the string, there is no unwanted string noise. You see, that's a very clean, very clean. And that's because I'm hitting with a lot of intent to make sure there is no string noise coming through. But these things take time. So take your time, pace yourself to do that. Right, so once you've sort of come back onto the onto that end bit of the first arpeggio, you just quickly slide up to the seventh here and you play exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing from the next two frets up. Okay, so we went. Okay, right, the final arpeggio, which is a slightly trickier one, it's a major seventh arpeggio. So both of those were minor sevenths because we're playing root third, fifth, flat seventh, and then root again. We're going to move up to the seventh fret, and it's an F minor, uh, uh, major seventh chord. So we had a D minor seventh, E minor seventh, and we end up with an F major seventh. So what we have sound was harmonically on the, under the backing track is. 
song. Which to me, I know it was in a metal context, but for some reason it makes me feel of a Larry Carlton song, but it's probably probably one of those, his chord progressions. So it's again, these are the chords that we have underneath. Right, so for the major seventh arpeggio, it's a little bit trickier. You're gonna, ta you're gonna, you're gonna effectively slide in into that eight. You're gonna hammer onto the 12th. Then with your le 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 right hand, you're gonna tap onto the 15th fret to get your, 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 your fifth over there. And then your major seventh is located here on the ninth fret of G. So this is a tricky bit. You're gonna have to use your second finger to do a tower of nowhere. Then you're gonna, tap, you're gonna hammer that. Then you're gonna use your third finger. Again, another difficult finger to use. And then you're gonna tap on the 14th. So. Then you're gonna go onto the eighth fret of E. And then you're gonna tap from here, tap on the 12th and then finish here on the, thir on the 13th, which is your root note. So what you're getting here is root, third, fifth, major seventh, uh, root, and then you're getting your major third, fifth, major seventh, and then back to the uh, root. Then we pull off back into the major seventh, into, your th into the eighth fret. Then we're gonna tap the 14th here, pull the tapping off into the 10th fret of G, 9th fret of G, then we're gonna tap onto the 15th, then we're gonna go to pull back off onto the 12th of E, and then finish off onto the 8th A, I mean. Okay? Check the tab as well, so you got all of that. Take your time, do this really, really slowly. Again, make sure you spend some time to ensure that it's all very clean. And just always when you're playing licks, I remember my teacher, Martin Golding, always telling me, always have an exit point. I have an exit strategy. Yeah, exit strategies, you heard about those things? Right, have an exit strategy if you're playing a lick. So in this case, my exit strategy here was just to play a very Zach Wilde kind of, um, you know, a double, a double stop bend, where I'm on the 13th of B and the 10th fret of a, E, and then repeat the same one, or same bend over the 16th of B and 13th of E. There you go. So that's basically what we have for this lick. Um, feel free to ask some questions, subscribe to my page and I'll be coming back with more content. I hope this was useful. Um, it's a fun little lick to play, practice it slowly. Obviously I've, the video is at 80, 120 and 160. Uh, make sure again, like anything that you play, like I said earlier, due diligence, make sure it sounds clean. All right, until then, uh, stay safe and stay metal. All the best.